Kabaneri of the Iron Fortress begins by showing the residents of the island country of Hinamoto, who at that time had to live in fear due to an attack from a swarm of zombies called Kabane. Due to the increasing number of Kabane and increasingly threatening their safety, the residents were forced to build defensive walls and a fortress-like station to shelter themselves from these creatures. People access the stations and transport wares between them with the help of fortified steam locomotives called Hayajiro. Over time, the residents began to feel comfortable with their lives in the fort, but not so with Ikoma, a young man who makes a living as a steam smith at the Aragane station, who thinks that what they do by hiding behind a wall is a cowardly act. Because of that, he tried to make a weapon to destroy Kabane. Ikoma, who has technician skills, is tasked with being a steam smith who does daily maintenance and repairs on steam locomotives. While doing his job, he also investigates Kabane through its organs, which are often caught in steam locomotives. Because of collecting Kabane's body parts stuck in steam locomotives, Ikoma becomes suspected of being a rebel and is thrown into prison by Kensho, the head of the Yomogawa family, who is a ruler at Aragane Station. After that, a steam train arrived at Aragane Station. However, the train turned out to have been controlled by a herd of Kabane, who then attacked the settlements of the residents. While everyone was running frantically to save themselves from the zombie attacks, Ikoma didn't waste the opportunity to escape. He ran to his house to retrieve the weapon, the bolt gun, which he had prepared to fight Kabane. With his weapon of creation, he overthrew one of the zombies that attacked him but was bitten and began to transform into a Kabane. Using several painful and potentially fatal techniques, Ikoma stops his blood flow from carrying the virus to his brain. He successfully does so, reverting to his human form and passing out. Ikoma, discovering that he has stopped the Kabane virus from infecting him, tells his fellow steamsmith, a young man named Takumi, of his success with his bolt gun and antivirus technique. After that, they rush to the steam train because they plan to leave Aragane Station, which had been conquered by the Kabane herd. Elsewhere, because Kensho has been infected and becomes Kabane, his daughter, Ayame, takes power and orders the soldiers to immediately evacuate the surviving residents, leaving Aragane Station with a steam locomotive. However, when Ayame and her bodyguards were about to head to the platform, they were confronted by a swarm of bloodthirsty zombies and engaged in a fierce battle with them. When she and her bodyguards are pressed by the increasing number of Kabane herds, suddenly a girl, Mume, appears there and then helps them deal with the zombies. Mume, a skilled fighter, can easily overthrow the Kabane herd and pave the way for Ayame and her bodyguards, who are about to head to the steam locomotive. After all the residents who managed to survive boarded the steam locomotive, Ayame ordered them to leave Aragane Station immediately. But before the steam train actually left the station, the soldiers would check every train to ensure that no Kabane had infiltrated the train. The examination was led by Kurusu, a young samurai who serves the Yomogawa family as Ayame's personal bodyguard. When Kurusu met Ikoma, he pointed his gun at Ikoma because his heart was burning brightly, indicating that he was a Kabane. Hearing that, everyone looked scared and turned away from him. Kurusu, trying to protect the residents, fired at him repeatedly and threw him out of the locomotive, leaving him alone. Afterward, they had a problem when they were about to leave Aragane Station because the security system at the gate suddenly malfunctioned. The only way to solve the problem was to open the gate manually, which meant one of them would have to get off the train and face the Kaban area alone to open it manually. However, unexpectedly, Ikoma appeared and then faced the zombies valiantly. After defeating the Kabane who stood in his way, he finally managed to open the gate manually, saving everyone. Even though he has been abandoned because he is a Kabane, he still has a conscience and cares about the safety of many people. Ikoma, who had given up when they all chose to leave him, was suddenly surprised by Mume and Takumi, who still cared about him and helped him so that he could stay on the train. When the train had moved away from Aragane Station and started its journey, Kurusu and his men returned to Ikoma and forced him to get out of the train. However, Mume defends Ikoma by saying that he is not a Kabane but a Kabaneri, that is, a half-human half-Kabane. Unlike Kabane, Kabaneri still has a human side and has not lost consciousness as a human, but has very strong physical strength like Kabane. After that, Mume revealed that she was also a Kabaneri by showing her brightly lit heart. Although it has been explained about the difference between Kabane and Kabaneri, Kurusu still refuses to have Ikoma and Mume on the train because it can endanger the safety of the other passengers, who are ordinary people. When they were about to kill Ikoma and Mume, Ayame arrived and immediately stopped them. Ayame then tells everyone that Ikoma and Mume have saved them all so that she will allow them to stay on the train and travel with them to Kongokaku, the strongest stronghold that is also the Shogun's greatest stronghold. However, the passengers are filled with alarm and distrust because of a lack of food and water. Doubt whether they will be admitted into Kongokaku, 
and the presence of the Kaban area accompanying them. Meanwhile, Mume reveals that she has a mission and needs help from Ikoma because she gets exhausted after fighting. After that, she begins training him personally in preparation for future Kabane attacks. Due to the depletion of food and water supplies, they decided to take a shortcut through the mountains to get to Kongokaku faster. However, the shortcut is more dangerous because the train will pass through a steep plateau and become vulnerable to attack by the Kabane herds who inhabit the mountainous area. When the train enters a tunnel, suddenly a herd of Kabane attacks them, and one of the Kabane is Wazatori who has lived long enough to gain proficiency with a specific art or has had enough past experience from its time as a human to retain some or most of its muscle memory in its Kabane form. Because of his ability and experience, Wazatori becomes very difficult to beat. Ayame, Kurusu, and the warriors hold off the Kabane while the surviving passengers escape from the train. Using his sword-wielding skills, Kurusu fights the remaining Kabane inside the train at close quarters. Simultaneously, Mume, Ikoma, and their allies also fight the Kabane. But during the battle against the zombies, Ikoma and Mume were tired because they had not received human blood, which is the main food of the Kabane. Even though they are Kabaneri, they also need human blood to increase their stamina in battle and survive. With Ikoma needing fresh blood, Ayame willingly slashes her arm and replenishes him with her blood. After Ikoma kills the Wazatori, Ayame declares that she will allow the Kabaneri to stay aboard the steam train and offers her blood to help sustain them. The others, including Kurusu, voluntarily join her. Afterward, Ikoma helps Kurusu and the warriors to develop weapons to kill the Kabane, and Ayame declares the Kabaneri are the bodyguards of their steam train. After a long journey, they finally arrived at Yashiro Station. However, how shocked they were when they found out that Yashiro Station had been conquered by the Kabane a few days ago. Several buildings had been destroyed, and the wreckage blocked the rail line, so the train could not cross the line. Ikoma and his allies then got off the train and tried to move the wreckage using a crane. However, before moving the wreckage, the giant beast approaching them suddenly appeared, nicknamed the Black Fog. The Black Fog is revealed to be a colony of Kabane fused into one giant beast. Unable to leave, the steam train retreats to the station workshop, and they seal the door. While the Black Fog beast is distracted, feeding on the bodies of the dead Kabane, Ikoma removes the wreckage from the tracks. Mume suggests a plan to kill the beast by working together. Eventually, the steam train leaves the workshop with the beast in pursuit. At the last possible moment, they shoot the beast with the train's cannon, and Mume kills the woman controlling it, who, much to her surprise, was a Kabaneri like her who turned rogue. With the beast defeated, the steam train leaves Yashiro Station. Not long after, they finally arrive in Shitori Station, still occupied by humans, but are only allowed to stay for a couple of days. As a leader, Ayame then met with the local government to negotiate in exchange because they lacked food, clean water, and medical supplies. The next day, a steam train transporting the Hunter Squad arrived at Chitori Station. The Hunter Squad is a special squad led by a charismatic man named Biba Amatori, who is highly trained and experienced in fighting Kabane herds. Unexpectedly, Mume turns out to be close to Biba, the Shogun's son, whom he considers her own brother, even though they are not related by blood. She then introduces him to Ikoma and the others. However, Ikoma is suspicious of Biba's past and whether he is really a hero or something else. Since Biba was also about to head to Kongokaku, he offered to let Ayame escort them along the way. Knowing that Biba and his men are trained troops, she immediately accepts his offer, and their train is finally connected to each other. After that, they left Shitori Station and continued their journey together. But on the way, Ikoma, a Kabaneri, can detect Kabane, who is inside the train of the hunter squad. Meanwhile, on the train, Biba observes Kabane's blue heart in front of him. During this time, he was using the heart to carry out an experiment that could turn a human into Kabane, one of which was Mume. She became a Kabaneri through a surgical operation due to her brainwashing by Biba, making her believe that she would also die like her mother unless she became stronger. Biba assures that he made Mume a Kabaneri purely because he wanted to protect her. In fact, he only wanted to use her for his own ends. Unfortunately, she was completely unaware of this, so she always obeyed every word he said. Ikoma tries to convince Mume that Biba is not a trustworthy person and warns her to be careful of him. However, she was not happy with Ikoma's words because she trusted Biba and thought of him as a guardian angel who had saved her life. Not long after, they finally arrived at Iwato Station, the last station they had to pass before reaching Kongokaku. However, the lord of Iwato Station, Lord Maeda, forbade Biba and his troops from entering his territory due to orders from the Shogun that imposed a ban on them from entering Kongokaku. That's why Ayame decides to part with Biba and the Hunter Squad and asks Ikoma to get Mume back. On the other hand, 
Lord Maeda agrees to meet Biba because only women and children accompany him. During the meeting, Mume leaves, saying she must go to the toilet, and lowers the Iwato station's drawbridge to let Biba's Kabane into the station. When she sees the Kabane attack the station, she is horrified by the consequences of her actions. Biba then kills Lord Maeda while his men take Ayame hostage for what he says is retribution for the shogunate's cowardice for the past ten years. Shortly afterward, Biba injects one of his Kabaneri, a young woman named Horobi, with a serum so that she can become the heart of another black fog beast, gathering all the Kabane into a single colony called Nue. The Nue is defeated, but Horobi survives and continues to fight. When she reaches Biba, he kills her since she has served her purpose. In the aftermath, Biba and his troops control a devastated Iwato station, and Mume then realizes that everything he had told her was a lie. Biba and his troops are now controlling the steam train and its passengers. Not only that, but he's also using their blood to feed his Kabane. He offers a deal to Ayame that if she can open the gates to Kongokaku and arrange a meeting with his father, he will guarantee the safety of her people. Then, Biba offers Mume a chance to join his troops, but she refuses and is forced to take the captive vaccine and sedated. Meanwhile, Ikoma hatches an online plan with some passengers to crack control of the steam train. His group starts their attack to take control of the train, but Biba anticipates a counterattack and confronts Ikoma by killing Takumi, who sacrifices himself to save Ikoma. Biba then calls on Mume to kill Ikoma. She obeys his order due to his captive vaccine, stabbing Ikoma, who falls from the train into a coast far below. However, Ikoma is still alive, washed up on the shore, and found by Kurusu, who went missing in the previous attack. On the other side, Biba injects Mume with the same liquid he used on Horobi to turn her into a Nue. At the same time, the steam train arrives at Kongokaku and announces that they have captured the men who destroyed Iwato Station, so they are allowed entry. Ayame pretends to have Biba prisoner because her crew is being held hostage, and they are taken to meet the Shogun. He tricks the Shogun into holding a sword tainted with the Kabane virus, which turns him into a Kabane. Biba then kills him and announces to everyone that Kabane is among them, which creates panic and people start killing each other out of fear. The hunter squad takes the train into the city and releases the Kabane, while Ayame manages to escape with the help of her uncle. In the meantime, Kurusu has one of Biba's scientists prisoner that has knowledge about the Kabane virus. He says that Mume can be saved once she becomes a Nui by injecting white plasma into her heart. Ikoma insists on being injected with black plasma to give him additional strength, although it will accelerate the Kabane virus and shorten his life. They enter Kongokaku, drawing the Kabane towards them. Simultaneously, Mume begins her transformation into a Nui to fulfill Biba's dream of destruction. Ayame appeals to the humans to stop attacking each other in fear and entreats them to leave Kongokaku with her people on the steam train. With Kurusu's help, Ikoma can reach the Mume Nui. He destroys the train when the hunters try to drive it into him with his additional powers since taking the Black Serum. Meanwhile, Mume seems unaware of what she's become, recalling memories from the past and imagining herself surrounded by butterflies. Ikoma manages to reach the Mume Nui but is intercepted by Biba, who is revealed as a Kabaneri. Biba stabs Ikoma with his sword, but this does not kill him, and as he is about to try again, Ikoma recovers and blasts him with his bolt gun. Mume appears to understand that Ikoma is near, and she allows him to inject her with the White Serum, destroying the Nui and returning her to her previous form. Afterward, Ayame and her people leave the smoldering city of Kongokaku in the steam train with Kurusu, Mume, and an injured Ikoma on board. The anime ends with Ikoma, who starts to recover, thanks to a serum secretly given by Biba, and the effects of the black serum seem to diminish. The moral lesson of the story is to be brave to stand for what we believe in, even if we stand alone, because it takes a great deal of bravery to stand up to our enemies, but just as much to stand up to our friends.